Hi, I'm Lane Redmond, and I'm really excited to be here and be able to share with you some of the history of the frame drum. I'm also going to be showing you techniques of playing on the tambourine, which is a frame drum, and also suggesting some ways that you can use these drums in the creation of contemporary rituals and ceremonies. In the ancient world, the frame drum was one of the oldest, most primal of instruments, and it was played predominantly by women. The frame drum is a small, portable hand drum, and it's probably based on the design of a woman's grain sieve. And it was used in ecstatic rites associated with ancient goddesses and gods. These rituals of drumming are an ancient technology for directly synchronizing the mind-body complex, enabling you to access deeper and deeper levels of awareness. Now, before we look at the slides, I just want to explain the system of abbreviations that we're going to be using. Many scholars are now using BCE instead of BC, and that stands for Before the Common Era. And they're using CE instead of AD, and that stands for the Common Era. And I'm going to be using this system of abbreviations. And now we're going to go to the first slide, which is of a wall painting in Chetel Hayek, an ancient town in Turkey. This is a wall painting showing a group of people dancing and playing percussive instruments in some type of ritual. This figure in the lower section of the slide has what may be the earliest known depiction of a frame drum. This is from 5800 BCE. This next slide is from Ur, a city in ancient Mesopotamia, which is present-day Iraq. And this is from around 2000 BCE. There are written texts describing Queen Shubat of Ur, 2700 BCE, as making music on harp and frame drum with her priestesses. Lipashu, the granddaughter of King Naram Sin, was appointed player of the Baladi drum in the Temple of the Moon at Ur. This is some of the earliest written evidence associating women playing the frame drum with religious activities. Ishtar, an ancient Mesopotamian goddess, commanded a powerful religion in which the frame drum and women played a substantial role. Inanna, the Sumerian goddess, known as Queen of Heaven and Earth, was the earlier archetype on which Ishtar was drawn. In some of the earliest written texts, Inanna is described as bringing the frame drum along with other instruments to the Sumerian people. When she makes her initiatory descent into the underworld, her instructions are to beat the drum to help her return. The frame drum, along with other drums, was used in processions to honor the goddess. This next slide is from ancient Syria, from the city of Ugarit, from between 1300 and 1200 BCE. The excavator, C.F.A. Schaefer, suggested that this might be a depiction of the Syrian goddess Anat, described in a text found at Ugarit as a frame drum player. This next slide is from Egypt, from 1475 BCE. The tambourine appeared in Egypt beginning in the second millennium BCE. Egyptian wall paintings show mostly women playing the frame drums in religious ceremonies and processions and in secular celebrations. From 1500 to 1300 BCE, this unusual shaped double-sided rectangular frame drum began to appear. One of these particular frame drums has survived and is on display at the Cairo Museum. Also at the Cairo Museum is an actual frame drum that has survived from the Ptolemaic period, which is after Alexander the Great's conquest of Egypt in the 4th century BCE. On the skin surface is painted the goddess Isis, being honored by her priestesses playing frame drums. The inscription says, Isis, Lady of the Sky, Mistress of the Goddesses. This slide is from the island of Cyprus from the first millennium BCE and shows a bird goddess playing her frame drum. Cyprus was an important crossroads in the Mediterranean, easily accessible by water from ancient Cairo, Crete, Palestine, Lebanon, Turkey, Syria, and the islands of Greece. This next slide 
is also from Cyprus, from the 8th century BCE, now settled by the Phoenicians. The Phoenicians were great traders and colonizers, and everywhere they went, the Phoenician women took their frame drum with them. Now we're going to jump ahead to the 16th century CE. This is a Turkish representation of a huri, which is a heavenly nymph, a sexual angel. Huris were ladies of the hour, who kept time in heaven, tending the souls of the stars, and whose tambourines represented the brilliance of the sun. Next, we see a painting from India, from the late 15th century CE. This is a visual representation of a raga, which is a complex melodic form and the basis of Indian classical music. Visually, the energy of this raga is manifested as erotic interplay between human male and female archetypes. Although the frame drum was already in India, the Islamic invasion starting in the 12th century saw the introduction of this specific type of tambourine. Now we're going back in time to the early 4th century BCE Greece. This beautiful statue is made from the original mold found in the commercial center of ancient Olympus. This is a representation of Cibele, a goddess originally from Phrygia and worshipped in Greece and Italy. The followers of Cibele participated in rituals that were similar to the Dionysian rituals. It was an ecstatic religion whose followers were mainly women who were always depicted playing the frame drum. This goddess was described as Cibele, the all-begetting mother who beats a drum to mark the rhythm of life. In ancient Greece, some of the most beautiful depictions of the frame drum are from the 5th century BCE, from the red-figured vase paintings. By this time in history, the frame drum has been in Western Asia and Egypt for over 2,000 years. It's theorized that the music of Greece developed from Asiatic and Egyptian sources, both of which use the frame drum in religious and secular contexts. The frame drum arrived in Greece with the introductions of the cults of Dionysius and Cibele from Western Anatolia or Phrygia. The tympanum, the Greek frame drum, was used pervasively by the Maenads, the women initiates, in the worship of Cibele and Dionysius. Both single-headed and double-headed frame drums appear, once again played almost exclusively by women with their bare hands. In later centuries, there are depictions of Eros, the winged god of love, playing the frame drum. Eros is one of the first in a long tradition of winged beings to appear playing the tambourine. This slide shows two women playing over the planting of crops with Eros watering the plants. The worship of Dionysius, who had numerous manifestations, possibly originating in Thrace, but also linked to Phrygia and Crete, was connected to the spread of the vine cult over Asia, Europe, and North Africa. In Greece, he superseded in supremacy Cibele, the Anatolian goddess, who inspired passionate dancing, drumming, and chanting. From Greece, both the worship of Dionysius and Cibele spread to Italy. Due to the survival of many writings on the Dionysian religion, we know much about the psychological and spiritual aspects of his worship. The practice of ritual trances were the mainspring of the cult of Dionysius, and these states were reached with the use of rhythmic music, chanting, dancing, and intoxicants. Through ritual madness, initiates were moved out of their senses, thrown into the state of unreason. Through the group rites, the initiates were released from their individuality and possessed by enthusiasm, by inspiration. The rites also functioned as a stimulus which intensified negative emotions, bringing them to a crisis state and discharging them from the consciousness. These last two slides are of Dionysian scenes from Roman sarcophagi. This next slide is of the Roman Cibele from 200 CE, 
The Romans saw the last great flowering of these rites when the great mother, Cibele, was ceremoniously brought into Rome in April of 204 BCE in response to the prophecy in the Sibylline books that she would save them from Hannibal and the Carthaginians. The interesting thing is that the Romans had to obtain her from the Phrygians, and what they obtained was a meteorite that the Phrygians worshipped as the goddess. In later representations, this goddess was portrayed as a woman with her frame drum, often surrounded by lions. After the Carthaginians were driven from Italy, the worship of Cibele flourished until the Roman Empire officially adopted Christianity in the 4th century CE. The last of the great temples dedicated to the mother was closed down and the instruments and music associated with her rites were banned. They were banned, but not successfully. Although you never see the Virgin Mary playing the frame drum, she's often surrounded by angels who do. These slides of angels are all from the Italian Renaissance. Now this is a little side trip to 18th century England where the tambourine had become a popular salon instrument and aristocratic ladies would whip out their tambourines after a formal dinner and play music commissioned specifically for the tambourine. Now we're coming closer in time to the present. This is 1890 and it's a Sicilian woman with her tambourine. This is an old drawing of a woman with her grain sieve, more than likely the prototype of the frame drum. And here is a grain sieve, made by the people in Sicily who still make the tambourines. And finally, we have a contemporary Sicilian tambourine portraying the goddess, the Virgin Mary. So that concludes the slides. And now I'm going to be showing you some techniques of playing these frame drums. And you'll also be seeing my group of women drummers, the Mob of Angels, as we do some performances for you. Now we're going to learn the basic strokes. And what we're using here is an Arabic tambourine, a Middle Eastern tambourine. And um, you can use any type of tambourine that has a double row of jingles. That's the important thing in this because you have to be able to hold the drum and let me just show you a holding shot on the inside your thumb presses against this set of jingles don't have your thumb over here press against that set of jingles and on the outside you have one finger over the edge of the drum and then you're going to play on this jingle with the fourth finger This is if you're right-handed. I'm going to be showing everything as if everybody I'm talking to is right-handed. So you poor left-handed people are going to have to do what you always have to do. So you're right-handed. That means you're going to play with your right hand. You're going to hold with your left hand. Now the hold with the left hand is about like that. You set it right in there. You press against the jingle and you put this your index finger up along the rim and you're going to be playing on this loose set of jingles with your fourth finger. Okay, that's all that your left hand is going to do at this point. It's just going to be doing ticks. Now, um, the first stroke that we're going to learn is ka and it's with the whole hand and it's like a slap. and it's in towards the center of the drum. And it's a contained sound. It's a sound that stops any ringing on the drum from other strokes. It stops the ringing. Slap. Okay, now we're gonna do this in correlation with our feet. This is really the way to synchronize your mind-body. Um, okay, we're gonna go step, 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 ka, ka, 
ka 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 now that's good now in between the steps we're going to put a tick in with the holding hand so it'll be step 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 ka tick 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 okay now the strokes each of the stroke on the drum are related to the elements the elements of earth water fire and air now i heard this from Hamza al-Din, who's a Nubian musician, a wonderful musician from North Africa. And he was explaining it in terms of the bendir. So I've adapted it to the rick. So this first stroke, ka, is the sound of the earth. So what you're going to see next is my group of women drummers called the Mob of Angels, and they're going to be doing an invocation of the elements. And the first stroke that they'll be doing is ka, tick, ka, tick, ka, tick, ka, tick. And you can play along. And that's the way that you'll really develop the sense of ka, the feeling of what ka means, how it relates to the earth element, and what that means to you. I'm also going to show you several other ways to do ka's. And what we've been doing now is with the drum up, and we're getting a lot of jingle sound. Now if we tilt the drum down, and we go ka, tick, ka, tick, ka, tick, ka, tick, we get less jingle sound. There's also a way to do ka to get more jingle sound. You hit like this, a little cup, and you hit it a little bit harder, and it goes And you get more sound. You have this, no jingles, and then you have this. And there's one more ka, and your hand swings in like this, and the thumb hits first, and you hit a sort of flam sound. It's like this. But the ka that we're going to use to practice with the elements is just the first one that I showed you. Ka, tick, ka, tick, ka, tick. And now we're going to go to the live performance. The stroke, ka, is the sound of the nourishing and sustaining energy of the earth. It is the bones in our body. Everything that we are comes from the earth. And everything that we are will return to the earth. Anything we put into the earth, we are literally putting into our own bodies and the bodies of our children and their children and their children and their children.
Now the next stroke is doom. This is one of the hardest strokes to get. Um, it's because it's a deep, open, ringing sound, and you've got to hit the drum, and your hand has got to bounce off. And you're using your second finger, the index finger. Now, I feel it like right through me, right through my center. It's a very deep, open sound. And if you keep your hand too stiff, it's going to muffle it. So your hand has got to be relaxed. You're throwing your hand in, but by the time it hits, it's very relaxed and it bounces off the surface. And we're going to do this the same way with a tick in between. Boom, tick, boom, tick, boom, tick, boom, tick. And we're going to walk. So step, 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 step. Boom, tick, boom, tick, boom, tick, boom, tick, boom, tick, boom, tick, boom, tick. Now there's a couple of ways to do doom. What I just showed you was with your second finger. But you can also do doom with your fourth finger. Second finger and fourth finger. Second, fourth, second, fourth, second, fourth. And it'll depend on what rhythm you're working on which doom that you use, but generally you're going to use the second finger and you're going to use that when you practice with the elements. Now doom is related to the element water. It's the sound of the cleansing, purifying energy of water. And now we're going to go to the performance and you can practice with us as we invoke the element water. The stroke Doom is the sound of water. It is the sound of the cleansing, purifying energy of water. It is the blood in our body. The next stroke is talk. And this stroke is connected to the element fire. And it is a very fiery sounding stroke. It's a rim shot. It's piercing. It's bright. And we're going to practice it here. We're going to go talk, tick. That's good. Now the thing about this stroke is you should practice it 
without bouncing off. Try to, um, I like to think of my fingers sticking there. I mean, at certain times, in certain rhythms, you're not going to, but for right now, when you're learning, let your fingers stick there. It stays there. Now remember, doom bounced off, bounced off, and ka also sticks. Now, one bad habit about ka is that people bounce off the drum head. They go, that's not what you want to do. When you do ka, your hand sticks. Doom, your hand bounces off. And talk, your finger sticks. You can also do talk with your second finger. But for now, we're going to practice it with the fourth finger. OK, so we're going to go to the performance. And you practice with us. The stroke, talk, is the sound of fire. It is the sound of radiant heat and light. It is the energy in our bodies. stroke is cha. Now, your hand is just hitting on the rim. Your fingers are not touching the head. You're not doing this. You just want to hit in an angle. And you hit with this sort of fattier part of your hand right here. Now, if you're hurting your hand, this is, you're not doing it right. You know, cha, you don't have to do hard. The purpose of cha is to make all the jingles crisp. And cha is the sound of air. So let's practice that. Cha, tick, cha, tick. Now, go and practice with the performance. We're going to go there now. And remember that this is the element air. And make your own connection to this element and make that connection to this stroke. The stroke, cha. is the sound of air. Without air, there is simply no life. It is the breath in our bodies.
Now what we're going to do is to learn some exercises that will help you develop a really good sense of time. In a traditional culture, you would go out and hang out with the drummers all the time, and this is how you would really learn a good sense of pulse. But in our culture, it's not happening. So maybe you get one lesson a week, then you have to go home and practice, and you come back, and you have to, in the meantime, really start to develop a sense of time on your own. So how do you do this? Well, you get a metronome. Now there's many different types of metronomes. And the most important thing is to get a loud one. Because as soon as you start to play, it's going to be really hard to hear the metronome. So just get a very loud one. And also, it's a little confusing at first to work with the metronome, because when you're right with it, you can't hear it. So now we're going to do some of the exercises. For purposes of this video, Julie is going to play a bell instead of a metronome because we'd never be able to hear the metronome. Now, you'll always want to be walking when you hear the bell. So we're going to do some exercises to develop a sense of pulse. And we're going to start by marking out a space of time with our feet. So step, 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 step. Good, that's good. Now we're going to use a vocalization to help us mark out that time. And it has no meaning besides to mark out the time. So here we go. Step, 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 step. Da, ka, da, ka, da, ka, da, ka. And we're going to mark that out for four beats. One, two, three. Four, da, ka, da, ka. Good, that's good. Now we're going to double that time. Here we go. Step, 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 step. Da, ka, da, ka, da, ka, da, ka. One, two, three, four. Da, ka, da, ka, da, ka, da, ka. One. Two, three, four. Good. That's good. Now we're going to double that time. Here we go. Step, 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 step. Daka, 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 One, two, three, four. Daka, 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 good, that's good, that's good. Now we're going to do four beats of the slowest one, four beats of the next fastest one, and four beats of the next fastest one. Then we'll go to the slow and the faster and the fastest one again. So here we go. Step. Step, 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 step. One, two, ready, go. Da, ka, 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 da, Good, that's great. Now what we're going to do is some clapping exercises. And we're going to be working with the fastest speed where we were going daka 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 one two three four 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 and that's what we're actually doing when we're going daka daka we're dividing the space between our feet into four little pieces so now we're going to accent each one of those pieces and see how that feels. We want to really internalize what those accents feel like. OK, here we go. Step, 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 
Step, step. We're going to clap only on one. One, two, three, four. 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 One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Good. That's right with the foot. You're clapping right with the foot. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Good. That's really good. Now what we're going to do is clap on three. Okay, here we go. Step, step. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. 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 Good. So. Clapping on three is completely different from clapping on one. Uh, one is the most grounded, most stable, and it's referred to as the downbeat. And when you clap on three, it's um, still stable, but it has a very uplifted feeling, and that's called the upbeat. Now what we're going to do is clap on two. So here we go. Step, 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 step. One two three four 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 one two one two three four 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 good that's good now what we're gonna do is clap on the four so here we go step 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 one two three four. 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 Good. Now that might have seemed a little harder. Just be sure that you keep your feet with the bell. Now we're going to clap on two and four. So here we go. Step. Step. Step, step. One, two, three, four. 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 One, two, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Good, good. So that might have seemed a little complicated. Just remember, keep your feet with the bell. And if you have to, just rewind the videotape and do it over and over again. So there's one more clapping pattern that I want to show you. And it uses the idea of a stick drumming fundamental exercise called the paradiddle. And that is right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. And we're going to do that with our feet again. So here we go. Step. Step. One, two, ready, go. Right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. Pair, ra, de, do. Pair, ra, de, do. Good. That's good. Now what we're going to do is double that time, just like we've been doing all along. So here we go. Step, step. Step, step. One, two, ready, go. Pair, right, do, do. Pair, right, do, do. Right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. Pair, right, do, do. Pair, right, do, do. Right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. Good. Now what we're going to do is the fastest speed. And we'll walk a little bit slower so that we can be able to do this. Okay, here we go. Step, 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 step. One, two, ready, go. Para diddle, para diddle, para diddle, para diddle. Right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. Para diddle, para diddle. Good, that's good. Okay, that concludes the clapping exercises. And what we're going to do now is use these same ideas and develop ways to practice on the jingles on the tambourine.
Now we're going to be doing exercises on the jingles and using the same ideas of dividing up time as we were before. Now we're going to be using our fourth finger, our ring finger, on both our playing hand and our holding hand. And once again, I'm just going to assume that everybody's right-handed. I'm just going to talk as if everybody is. Okay, so right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Right, left, da, ta, da, ta, da, ta, da, ta. Good. Now, we're going to be walking. We're going to be using the vocalization. So we're really going to be synchronizing our feet, our hands, and our mouth. So here we go. Step, 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 step. One, two, ready, go. Da. Good, that's good. Now we're going to go to double that time. Step, 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 step. One, two, ready, go. Da, ka, da, ka, da, ka, da, ka. Good. That's good. Now we're going to go to double that time. So, step, 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 step. One, two, ready, go. That's good. Now we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to do four beats of the slowest speed, four beats of double that speed, and four beats of double that speed. We'll step a little bit slower. Okay, step, 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 step. One, two, ready, go. Da, ka, da, ka, da, ka, da, ka, da, ka, da, ka. Good. That's good. So practice that at a very slow tempo so that you can do all three speeds. And then as you get better and better, you slowly raise the metronome. It's always better to practice slowly and then get it faster. Okay, now the next exercise will enable you to develop this roll. Okay, now the way to practice that is by using the fourth, third, second finger of your right hand and the fourth finger of the left hand. So it's four, three, two, four. Four, three, two, four. Four, three, two, four. Four, three, two, four. Good. Okay, now we're going to do this exercise using all three speeds. Four beats of the slow speed, four beats of the speed that's double that, and four beats of the speed that's double that. Okay, here we go. Step. Step, step, step. One, two, ready, go. Da, ka, 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 da, Good. 
That was good. Now the final exercises on the jingles is the paradiddle exercise. And that's right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, pair, ra, di, do, pair, ra, di, do, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. That's good. Now we're going to do the same thing that we've been doing all along. We're going to do the slow speed and then double that time and then double that time. The difference with the paradiddle is that to complete the entire par paradiddle takes eight beats rather than four. So we're going to do eight beats of the slow speed, eight beats of the speed that's double that, and eight beats of the speed that's double that. So here we go. Step, step. Step, step. One, two, ready, go. Pair, ra, di, do. 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 Right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, 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 left, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. Good. Now that's the end of the jingle exercises. Now what we're going to start doing is combining some of the strokes that we learned earlier. So we're going to take doom and we're going to combine it with talk. So it'll be doom talk, doom talk, doom talk, doom talk. And we'll put a tick in between them. So it'll be doom tock tick 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 doom tock tick. Good. Now just remember that you want those sounds to be very different. Doom is very low and open. Tock is a high pitched rim tone. And this is doom. Okay, next, reverse that. Go talk doom. Talk doom. And you can put a tick in there also. Talk doom. That's good. Now, we're going to do ka talk. Ka, ka, and then talk. So, ka talk. Ka tak, ka tak, ka tak, ka tak, and then put a tick in there also. So ka tak, 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 ka tak. Good. Now we're gonna do ka doom, ka doom, ka doom, ka doom. Good. Good. Now we're going to do doom ka. 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 Good. And um, the final one we'll do is doom cha. 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 Now remember when you're playing, if you keep the head over, you have less of the sound of the jingles. Now for purposes of this video, I've been keeping the drum more upright so you can see clearly what I'm doing. 
but that gives you a lot more of the jingle sound, which is something that you don't always want. It depends on um, the rhythm and what kind of sound you want there. Now, these exercises are to give you fluency between the different strokes. And you can make up any kind of pattern that you like. And I'll show you one that I made up when I first started to learn to play. And I just figured out the hardest combinations of strokes for myself at that time. And it turned out to be a seven beat pattern. And it ended up that I used it in a lot of the pieces that I was playing at that time. So here it is. It's do, ka, tick, ka, do, ta, tick, do, ka, tick, ka, do, ta, tick, do, ka, tick, ka, do, ta, tick, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. did was add a shake in to the rhythm that I was playing. And that brings us to a really unique aspect of the tambourine. It's jingles. Now, what you just saw was a mob of angels making use of the shaking of the jingles. Um, from the most ancient of times to the present, the shaking of jingles, the ringing of bells, the clanging of cymbals, and the striking of gongs has resounded at the moment of most intensity of rituals. From ancient Egypt, Greece, Italy, Anatolia, right up to present day, um, African traditions, Tibetan Buddhism, even Roman Catholicism. The ringing of bells, the ringing of metal, has marked out the most important moments. According to Lisa Manish, the Egyptologist, the jingles have retained their ancient meaning of protecting the sanctuary, protecting the shrine, the divinity, and the divinity's attendants. The purpose of the ringing metal is to dispel negative energies and to attract or magnetize beneficent energies. Now, what I'm going to do is show you some ways of incorporating the shaking into some other rhythms. Now, the simplest one is just straight, ahead, straight ahead shaking. So. Now, when you start to shake, you want to put your fingers on the jingles here to brace it. See, before you had them up, now you put them down so that you have something to hold on to. So, here we go. We're going to do this shake one more time. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, now we're going to do a simple uh, rhythm that uh, uses just the straight ahead shaking. So first I'll play the rhythm. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, doom, tack, 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 doom, tack. Good. 
good. That's good. Now, shaking, um, it entails some strength in your wrist. And you want to make sure that it's just your wrist turning. It's not your arm going up and down. It's just your wrist. Now, I'm going to show you a couple more patterns that you can incorporate the shakes in. Another rhythm would be good and I'll show you one more Now, we're going to go to the piece Rattlesnake, as it's performed by the Mob of Angels. And this piece utilizes a lot of this shaking technique. And it's an improvisational yet structured piece. It's made up of different segments, and each segment has its own cue. I give the cues signaling which segment to go to. And there's a lot of mirroring in call and response. I do something, and then the group does it. Now we're going to see this footage of Rattlesnake.
I just want to say a few words about the circles we've been performing in. The oldest known dances were circular, ritually repeating and making manifest the cyclic nature of reality. In a circle, each participant faces equally into the still point around which everything revolves. Each participant is in relationship with every other participant. For me, the circle is the most perfect way to play. And it's a really great way to teach because everybody can see me and I can see everybody else. So what I want to show you is just a few seconds of a circle dance that the Mob of Angels created. Another concept that I wanted to talk about is the one about processions. Processions are another very ancient form a community used to mark important days. Parades and processions have immense power. And this summer, I was in Greece, and I was really fortunate to see um, a festival day where they took the icon from one church in the village and processed down through the village to the other church and everybody had a big meal and then they carried the icon back to the first church. So what you're going to see next is some footage of the Mob of Angels in concert doing processions. And then what I wanted to show was a simple way that you could use that idea yourself. Um, what you need is somebody playing the bell and you want to put your best player on the bell because the bell holds everything together. And you may have noticed if you're playing with a group of drummers, what starts to happen. People get faster and faster and faster and faster and faster until everything breaks into chaos. So it's very important not to rush. In fact, we visualize ourselves as very elegant, stately elephants. Slow, very slow. So it's important to keep things slow. And a good stroke to do for a basic procession is cha. And the reason cha instead of doom or tak is because it's a fatter sound, so people will sound more together. So here we go. Step, step. Cha, tick, cha, tick, cha, tick, cha, tick, cha. Tick, cha, tick. Good. And now we'll go to the footage.
we're going to go to some footage where I'm playing this drum, this large frame drum, and the mob of angels is doing a vocal chant to raise energy. And you'll see that this drum can be very powerful in that situation. And you'll notice that I get faster and faster as the moment of intensity comes. And I don't have time in this video to go into the te techniques on this drum, but I'd like to recommend the Fantastic World of Frame Drums, the instructional video distributed by Interworld Music of my teacher, Glenn Velez. And he is a wonderful frame drummer. And he goes into the techniques on this drum and some other styles of frame drums that I haven't had the chance to show you. So now we'll go to the footage of the Mob of Angels. <laughs> 